Welcome to Sports in Focus. I'm your host, Fitzroy Prendergast. And as usual, we try to give you some of the very best interviews that is possible. And today, we have the former West Indies off spinner, Lance Gibbs. And we want to welcome him to Sports in Focus. Hi, Lance. How are you? Wonderful. Thanks for being here. We want to talk to you a little bit about some of the things that are happening in West Indies cricket, and particularly your life in cricket. And for the viewers in Jamaica who might not necessarily know much about Lance Gibbs, tell us about your early days in Guyana. How did you all get involved in cricket and so on? I live not too far away from the Demerara Cricket Club, and uh, my idol at the time was Robert Christiani. He was the only West Indian cricketer from, from Guyana. It was then British Guyana. And I would go on to the fence next door to our house just to see Robert Christiani walk up and down in the house. Uh, I started as a leg spinner and uh, I couldn't bowl the Google. So Arthur McIntyre, who was a former England wicketkeeper batsman, he was coaching in Guyana and we decided that the, the leg break, uh, my length and direction was not particularly good, but when I, every time I bowled an off spin, it was, was quite good. But you couldn't set a field for an off break bowl as well as a leg spin. So because my control was much better, I decided to change to off spin bowling. And it proved fruitful for you, is it? In a way, yes, yes. It, I have ha happy memories as far as off spin is concerned. But uh, you've had leg spinners like uh, Shane Warne, you know, who has done extremely well. Uh, the highest we could take in the world and uh, leg spin and spin bowling in general is an art that once you develop it you and your control is good you could be a great asset to any side. In terms of your interests, um, did any of your family play cricket or it was just you know this little son? Uh, we, we all played cricket in the in the backyard at home you know but uh, I've got a brother that played soccer for Guyana but none of them developed I only had two brothers mm -hmm. so uh, that was it you know. And uh, tell us a little bit about um, when you started to catch the eyes of the Guyana selectors, because having you know gone and started your early, um, you, you know, going around playing cricket in the backyard and so on. Uh, when did you start to hone your skills properly to ensure that you got into the limelight, so to speak? Uh, in in the, the cup cricket at home, I got a lot of wickets. I was called to trials, and I got into the Guyana side. Uh, I played for the first time for Guyana against the MCC in 1954 and I bowled against uh, fellas like Tom Graveney and Willie Watson and Len Hutton and that lot. Uh, I got two wickets for 120 runs off of 41 overs, so that, that was reasonably good. I have never played bit from 12, from 11 o'clock until 5.30 in the afternoon. So the next day it was difficult to, to wake up. But uh, I, one of, I was a, a great collector. Of, uh, I had a scrapbook mm -hmm. that was particularly good. And uh, one of the men in the scrapbook was DCS Compton and Bill Edridge who were like the Middlesex twins. So my first first class wicket was DCS Compton Bowl Gibbs for nine. Whoa, interesting. Yeah. Um, was it very difficult to get into the Guyana side? Tell us about some of the players that were yeah. vying for position yeah, in the yeah, Guyana yeah. side. Well, we, we had a, a, a senior off spinner by the name of Norman White, and he, he used to bowl particularly well for Guyana. But uh, he was, you know, he, he didn't fly it in various space. He was particularly, you know, that type of bowler that would stick it down there like a Norman Marshall. So it was a different, a different thing altogether. Uh, we've had leg like, spinners in, in Ivan Madre, who uh, also played for the West Indies. But uh, you were given a chance, you know, that was the most important thing. Now, uh, having gotten the look in as it relates to the Guyana selectors, uh, your, your dreams and aspirations would have obviously been to go to the West Indies team, to make it to the West Indies team. Uh, how did that materialize? How difficult a road was that for you to trot? Not particularly difficult. Uh, after the 56 quadrangular tournament in Guyana, I, I got quite a few wickets for, for Guyana and I was invited to trials for the 1957 tour of the uh, West Indies to England. 
I, I bowled extremely well in, in the trials, but uh, at that time there was Ramadan and Valentine, yes. you know, who were the key bowlers at that time. So, and I think Bogus Williams also as a leg spinner went on that tour. So I didn't get a look in, right. but, but shortly after that, the, the disastrous tour that we had of England in 57, uh, I, I sort of made a mark. And what was it like to make your debut? I mean, um, tell us about the feeling. Uh, you know. It was great. I mean, I always wanted to be a West Indian test cricketer. And having gotten the chance, you know, I seized it. All right. You had, you've had great success um, playing for the West Indies. 309 wickets as a off-spinner. That's a tremendous feat. It was a world record at the world time. World record at the time. Mm. Uh, did it impact on you that much until afterwards? Or was it just, just going through your normal um, routine of doing well, trying to play well for the West Indies? Well, and didn't, you know. the, the question of playing for the West Indies, you, you've got a lot of pride to fulfill. You've got to, you know, you're representing nations, not only one country, and, and therefore you want to give up your best at all times. What was your greatest moment um, in playing for the West Indies? Uh, probably getting three wickets in four balls in Australia, because Ramadan and Valentine were still on that tour in 60-61. And, uh, you know, the fellas used to moan a bit, and Frank Worrell said after a while, well, look, Lance, you're in, Ram, you're out. And I never looked back. I got three wickets in four balls in the, in the test match, and I got, uh, we, we won that test, and I, I got uh, like eight wickets in the, in the game. And then in, us, in uh, the fourth test match in Adelaide, I, I got a hat trick. So, you know, it was good from there. Isn't any and turning back. Having experienced such great moments, what, were there any points, any low points in your career, Lance? Yeah, certainly there were low points. Uh, cricket is a competitive game. I remember being dropped for, as an off spinner for Maurice Foster, and, and that was a very low point in my career. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. All right, but um, your 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 off spin bowling for those persons who might be aspiring to be off spinners, what it is that made you so special? If you look back in retrospect, look back sure. at your bowling. I I would put a spot at practice just outside off stump, and I would aim to hit that spot from whatever trajectory I would bowl at, because. Uh, you, you, you need variation of pace, you need different things. You, you've got to be able to think a batsman out, you know, and uh, we, we need thinking cricketers in the Caribbean today. Because if you're playing at 15, uh, I might end up playing for the West Indies eventually, and you might end up playing for England or South Africa or some other country. And they're playing a lot of that type of cricket now. You play on the 15, you play on the 19, you play in the 18. I, I've never had that process. Probably if I had that process, I would have been a better bowler. Because if you're playing against a batsman from the time he's 15, he's 19, 18 into the West Indies team, you must be able to find strengths and weaknesses of that player and, and try and exploit it. Lance, in terms of batsmen, um, which one of the batsmen that you bowled against was the most difficult for you? Have you any thought on that? Uh, no, 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 not really. Uh, Ian Chappell, he, he would offset me a bit. Uh, he, he would come down the track, you know, he would stay back and play off the back foot. He, he played spin bowling particularly well. And I, I thought that Ian, due to the fact that he was an exceptional player of spin, you know, might have been one of those that uh, I would rate highly. And, uh for you, um, what made it difficult um, to, uh, when someone was trying to nullify your effect? What got you off your, your, you know, your rhythm more? Was it coming down the pitch or you know, hitting out at you, being very aggressive again? Not, 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 not really. Uh, I think the the English they thought that I I turned around and I bowled particularly, you know quickly and uh, Tony Gregg for example started doing something in Barbados where when I spin and turn around he would be in the middle of the track you know knocking down some piece of uh, turf or something like that uh, in a way to offset your rhythm but you have got to be all it's gamesmanship more than anything else and you've got to be able to 
to, to put that at the back of your mind and, and continue to bowl as, as you're bowling. Let's change the gear a bit. Um, let's look at the West Indies, um, the state of West Indies cricket. What's your thought, your honest opinion on the state of West Indies cricket right now? Uh, I would say that we need both batsmen and bowlers that batsmen for example that could make a hundred runs in West Indies cricket there is no one that you could say there goes a hundred and if you don't have that individual in your side where you could say when you see the back of him there goes a hundred you've got a problem and it's the same thing with bowlers you can't say well look John James today is going to get five wickets when you've got a team of that nature, you, you, you're struggling. And if you take the Australian side, for example, where they've got Lang, Lang, Langer, you've got uh, Hayden, you've got uh, Pontin, you've got Hussey, and you could say, there goes a hundred, and it could easily happen, you know? And in the, in the Indian side, it's nearly the same thing, Tundulkar and somebody. We had Lara, and within the last couple of uh, tours, we've had uh, Chandra Paul. So we've got a, a major problem as far as batting and bowling is concerned. How can the West Indies Cricket Board, it's, it has been in battle, a lot of um, controversies, how can the West Indies Board lead the change, the turnaround in the fortunes of West Indies Cricket? What are, what do you well, there's, there's a lot that can be done. Uh, the, the players don't seem to be satisfied with the, the WIPA and the, the continuing, you know, problems that every game, you want to go on tour, you want to be settled, you know, you don't want to, to be quarreling over money and things of that nature. Money would come eventually if you were being successful. But uh, I think they have bridged the gap to a certain extent by putting uh, this fellow Ram Narayan as a member of the, uh, of, of the, the, the uh, committee, you know. I, I think he's a non-voting committee member. Right. But the point is that he would be there at every meeting and if he's got problems, you'd be able to sort it out before it gets into the news. So that's a, that's a, it's, a, it's a positive move, I think. And uh, whether Ram Narayan would stay as a member is debatable. It's another thing. Uh, uh, it, this is a new era in West Indies cricket. We've had Brian Lara has retired. Now we have a new captain, um, Ram Narayan Sawan. First of all, tell me, how do you think Sawan will handle the job as captain? Well, it's left to be seen, you know. Yeah, he was doing reasonably well in England, and then he had the injury. So he's got to come back now and, and sort of prove himself. Uh, the replacement that they had, uh, Ganga, he struggled because his batting struggle. He was not able to perform as well as we know he can. And, you know, then they had the problem of who should be captain between Ganga and Gale. And Gale was appointed, and he did reasonably well. So Sarwan has got to know, therefore, that there's somebody you know, breathing down his neck. So he would have to perform particularly well. Is there any hope at all, Lance, with this present crop of cricketers? When you look at um, some of the flaws that you see, the glaring flaws, the, you, when they're batting or when they're bowling, is, it, is there any hope of this present team leading the turnaround in West Indies cricket? There certainly is, you know. Uh, cricket is a competitive game, and you've got to go out there and compete. Uh, probably when you play first class cricket, Jamaica, against Guyana, uh, the crowds are not as great and therefore fellas would, would make runs. But in, in a test match when you've got 15,000 people in front of you, you know, that separate the, the, the good players from the great players, you know. And uh, listen, when I, when I played first, I was the 99 cricketer that played for the West Indies. I started in 58, 59 and uh, Today, no, you've got nearly 300 fellas that have represented the West Indies. That's a, an increase of 200 over nearly the same 30 years. So fellas are being given a chance, and if you're being given a chance and you're not making use of it, you must realize that somebody else is going to replace you. I'm going to ask you, what, what is your thoughts on the performance of uh, the former president of West Indies Cricket Board, Ken Gordon? He just stepped down. Um, your thoughts on his tenure? Um, well, you thought things could have been handled differently? I, I, as you, I know, I live in Miami, right. and I, I don't know to, to a great extent the day-to-day -day 
uh, activities or, or performance of the, 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 the presidents. Mm -hmm. uh, the president, you've got to realize that it's a board and all the decisions that are made don't necessarily fall on him. I mean, uh, if you've got a contract today, uh, it, you, you could be outvoted here or there and he's got to give way, you know? So it's difficult really to pinpoint performances of that nature as far as the board is concerned. But Julian Hunt is now the new president, right? Uh -huh. Elect. Um, your thoughts on what he might be able to do for West Indies cricket? Well, I, I'd hope that uh, the batter, the, 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 the quibbling that is going on continuously with the players and the West Indies board is, is put aside and that we, we get fellas when they're going on to the field, they're free and you, you don't have the questions of money coming up and different things. You want to go out there and perform at your best. Now, we just touched a little bit on the We for West Indies saga, a little bit of, for me on, on that saga, because one, one of the, the concerns, obviously, is the impact that it's having on the players. Certainly when these players go, then there is um, a financial problem or when they feel that like the West Indies court board is not being honest with them. It does impact on their performance. If you were in that role, um, probably a, a part of the West Indies cricket board, what sort of measures would you implement to really... Well, for know? a start, I would not allow the problems with money to dictate my performance on the field. You must have pride in yourself when you walk out there, you're representing the West Indies. And if you're going to have money matters interfering with your performance, you, you've got no right going out there. So, as far as I'm concerned, money matters must be put aside and you go out there and perform to the best of your ability. Uh, Lance, uh, we, we look at the Cricket Academy. This is one of the things that is now dominating the airwaves. Um, there is a thrust to revitalize the Cricket Academy. How important and vital is that in the army of West Indies cricket? And how do you think it should be operated? I, I think it's very important. Uh, if you could get the young fellas at this age group, 15 to... Uh, 15 to 18 there about where you could sort out their strengths their weaknesses and and work on it I think it's a great thing uh, if you look at the, the Digicel program here we've got 40 of the top young cricketers here in uh, Jamaica uh, They've, we've all got weaknesses, and if the weaknesses could be solved at this time, you know, at the grassroots level, it, it's, it's great for West Indies cricket. You've got Digicel putting in a fair amount of money, they've got coaches, they've got some of the, the individuals who are like household words, the Sarwans, the Gale, the Ramden. Uh, in Trinidad, we had some of the former players like uh, Rafik Jumadine and David Williams there at the session. Here we've got Chris, uh, you know, you've got Benjamin, you've got Atterton. They're all helping to, to bridge that gap that has been lacking for, for quite a while. And this is all, this is a compliment to more or less to, to Digicel for having brought us all together. As somebody has done so much for West Indies cricket in your time playing and afterwards, you've been on three tours as a manager, right? Um, what are your hopes and aspirations for West Indies cricket? I, I would hope that West Indies cricket rise to the standard that I would like to see it, which is to the top again. Uh, you know, being the champions of the world is particularly good. What are your thoughts, Lance, on the talent pool in the region? There's always some talk about there's not enough talent in the region. What, what is your view on that? There's a lot of talent in the region. There is more now than ever before. And uh, it's for the fellas to inculcate the habits that are good and, and play the game as we know it can be played. And uh, you are here in Jamaica as part of uh, the coaching cadre I, of I, Digicel coaching I, I, I work with Digicel. Right. I, I'm on the contract with Digicel and I'm happy to be associated with them. Uh, I, I, I deal with the, the stakeholders, the president I could call, you know, and the president of the West Indies board call and, and, and get things 
moving in the right direction. There's a so move. I'm like an advisor. Okay, excellent. There's a move um, to suggest some, by some cricket pundits that enough opportunity has not been given to spinners in the region. Um, do you buy that argument? Or if not, what is the problem? Why is it that we tend to continually lean towards fast bowling? Well, even in the state? during the Clive Lloyd era, we had some of the greatest quick bowlers the world has ever seen. And if you had those quick bowlers that were exceptionally good, they had to play. Four of them, Marshall, Holden, Roberts, Garner, and you could go on and on and call. They were great fast bowlers and they, they you know, should have played. Uh, th that does not say that in our domestic cricket, the spinners don't take the most wickets. But you don't have those great fast bowlers anymore. You've got uh, sort of medium pacers. And therefore, the spinners have got a chance now of making an impact. Uh, you know, domestic cricket, as I've said, they take the most wickets, the spinners, and therefore they should be given a chance, especially now that the quick bowlers are not as great as those that have called. When you look at the whole aspect of uh, the league in the, in the West Indies, personally I'm not satisfied with the quality of the, the league around the region. Um, what needs to be done? I mean, when we were dominating um, cricket, we had a lot of these talent, talented players honing their skills in England. That is no more the case necessarily because um, apart from, say, uh, Shandopal, who is now there, and, and, and others, um, the, the opportunity in England is limited. How do we need to deal with our league to ensure that we get quality players emanating from it? Well, they, they, they're selected due to the fact that the Sobers, the Tanhais, the Nurse, all those fellas that you could talk about, they, they really made an impact in West Indies cricket. They made an impact in county cricket, right? Uh, you've got to perform or else the English are not going to select you. And our batsmen, to a certain extent, apart from Lara, has not really been performing. And therefore, the Indians and the South Africans and the Australians were being given that chance that we sort of monopolized for quite a long time in English county cricket. Uh, it is for our fellas to, if they're good enough, to make sure that they are also selected like some of the former players and, you know, our cricket would, would, would mature because when you play in England, you play on varying wickets. You find a green top, you find a wicket that the ball is coming on and, and doing all sorts of different things. And if you adhere to some of the basic principles in England, you would perform even better on our short front wickets. You live in Miami, and I'm, I'm sure that um, there was a bit that people, some persons were disappointed that the United States did not actually get a chance to, you know, host a little segment of the World Cup. Uh, but how is cricket taking on in that part of the world? I mean, well, what's there's, happening there? There are hundreds of uh, fellas from the Caribbean, as you know, and from Australia, England, New Zealand, all over the world that live in the U.S. of A. Uh, the U.S. of A, to a certain extent, they've got problems where there's a lot of in fighting, this body wants to be this, this body wants to be that. We're building a stadium in uh, Florida uh, that is going to be extremely good. Uh, there are millions of people from cricketing nations that are living there, and I believe it would be successful. Final question um, for your Lance as we wrap this interview. Um, you've done it all playing for the West Indies as a manager, you're now in involved heavily with coaching. Uh, when you look at, uh, when you're done with all of this and you sit back in your rocking chair, what would you want to see happen? I would like to see the West Indies continuing to win. Winning is a habit and they must make sure that this, they continue that way. When they lose, I cry. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm that emotional about this game. Thank you very, very much, Lance. It was pleasure. always a pleasure talking to you. And certainly, we wish you all the best in Miami. And of course, we know that you'll continue to support and have your input in West Indies cricket. Thanks a lot. That's it for Sporting Focus feature. On behalf of my crew here, this is Fitzroy Prendergast, signing off from Sports in Focus. But join me next time when I'll have another very interesting personality for you.